Hello and welcome to Sim.bc, where it right now is, as per usual, I'd start to say, 10 past 1 in the morning. I'm joining you, as always, with a cup of green, because think about that environment. Am I right, people? Am I right? Because we, if we don't look after it, then who will? Right? The planet is all we bloody have. At least in the physical world, but not in the world of imagination and creativity. And that's exactly the world that we might be stepping into today. Because today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be tackling the genre of fantasy. I know! It's amazing. I would like to start off, though, <laughs> by a disclaimer. And this is sort of the exact same thing that happened when I was talking about detective and mystery stories. And that is that in the detective and mystery stories, I'm so heavily, heavily inspired by Sherlock Holmes because I sort of love those books and love all of these stories and games with them, with that duo. And in the fantasy world, Lord of the Rings is sort of, you know, that's my jam when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to fantasy, when I think about fantasy adventures, I'd say I think straight off the books, straight off my mind, straight off the top of my head to Lord of the Rings. So, you might be seeing some things that <coughs> will be very different from those books or try to be very different at least, intentionally uh, opposite. Yes, because if I would tend to do the exact same story or even similarly close to the same story, I would just horribly fail. That's just my point of view, right? So this could be change for change's sake. Could be brilliant. Could be the best thing and the best synopsis of an opinion and story you've ever heard. Could be the worst. And yet again, some context though. This, these type of videos, just me going through how I would probably go about tackling making a story within the genre, if it's a book, a series, or a movie, or whatever. Just developing sort of an idea of a story on how I would go about it. To do th that, we have a five questions in order to sort of try to maintain at least some form of integrity and structure throughout the video. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it with the first question, which is going to be How would I go about designing the scope of the characters and what would the main character gravitate towards? Now, since I have been talking a lot about making an individual, you know, the one individual lonely character, lonely in a big group and, you know, even though there's friends and foes around, they still feel very, very alone. What I will try to focus on is a, uh, a character set, so to say, a set of characters that is as humongous as humanly possible, right? We're talking like Game of Thrones territory and might even a lot bigger if I only would be able to handle and juggle all of the characters effectively. Just in order to get away from the Lord of the Rings sort of idea of having a fellowship of the ring. No, no, no. What I want to try and have here is an army of set object that is going to be the magical and fantasy thing in the world. However, I want to surround it towards a, uh, a specific character because you sort of have to ish you absolutely don't have to but i would since i'm not an expert in the area since i'm not a professional author i would probably try and gravitate the storytelling towards one character whilst trying to introduce that this entire army is made up of named characters who all are important so to say however i would go about doing that baffles me at this very time but that's sort of my ambition if i were to move into such a story today however since we're talking about surrounding and revolving the uh, the main character around the story and trying to tell the story from the perspective of everyone but trying to focus on the quest of one individual maybe that's probably a way to go try to surround the perspectives the different perspectives provided by the entire army right and and trying to revolve all the encounters towards the entire army, having this very Band of Brothers feel to it, but then trying to say that, well, in order to maintain a, uh, what should we say, not a single perspective story, but the story that will be fairly linear, sort of a tray we can string along, um, I would have it surround sort of a one character or one item that is going to be very important for the army to follow. And since I'm talking about the army to follow, let's move into question two because I'm sort of going to talk about these inter interchangeably anyway. And that is, what would be the geographical confinement of the story? Now, in, before I say that though, 
the character which the plot sort of treading the uh, is going to surround is a character who is going to be raised in a place where there's not a lot of fantasy around. There's not sort of a very conventional place, which is usual though for when it comes to uh, when it comes to these sort of stories. You try to gradually introduce the fantasy elements to the reader or you just blast them all at the beginning how i would go about it would probably be try and have this first approach the former so to say with the main character or the main purpose of the, uh, the, the sort of the person who's probably going to be the MacGuffin, the sort of person who's going to sort of guide the attraction of the of the uh, of the army, so to say, and the general bigger amount of characters is going to start off in a very small in, in a place where there's not that much of fantasy going on in the world. It's very much similar to our own world, and then this is going to be a city, a huge city, might even be the biggest city in the storytelling world. And that's important to me because that's going to show off that within the city there is not that many fantasy elements. And that also introduces the way we can handle other races saying that well you know the humans or the dwarves or the elves or whatever trope you want to run with or if I create my own entire new race is the main seat of power in the region and then we can tackle things as casual racism throughout going out throughout the entire uh, the entire book because they can meet on new races that's a good way of exploring it however what i sort of want to say is that the one person who is surrounding uh, the entire experience and the MacGuffin is going to be of the mindset of that fantasy does not really exist. It's going to be sort of this critical mindset all the time moving with the army and probably be in a place where this person cannot see what is actually going on if there becomes a battle and even when they're out they're sort of treated like a, uh, a royalty so to say, kept offshore and offside and in the, in the very safest place of the army and then we could sort of so, so that this person won't really see the fantasy landscape around them, which will make them only more critical towards that, you know, this doesn't really exist. Whilst we will see and the reader will be provided with the experience and the perspective of the entire army sort of fighting off various threats whilst treading along this sort of path that leads them to the whatever MacGuffin might be of the story, right? That's sort of my plan and then ever so often as this one person can be able to interact with any form of sort of small fantasy and magical whatever element they will be always be critical and sort of apply logic to why this is happening failing to do so and that will introduce a bit of comedy in what maybe be if I write a story right be a very action drama <laughs> almost therapeutical I'd say no but a tragedy based story even though it's set within the fantasy limitation and confinement so the physical, geographical area and confinements of the story would start off in a city where there is only one race and very heavily focused on one sort of culture and then spread out through an entire vibrant world obviously through I'm saying obviously but the way I would go about it would be they're treading with the army along these uh, this place whatever you want to say the the line on the map the dotted line on the map that leads to the cross and it goes all over and along their path so say yeah that's what it's called the path and along their path they're encountering different tribes or different cultures or different races or different magical phenomena different mountains different landmarks who then can be sort of a thread out a um, what should we say sort of crumbles that we can then later build on in order to build the entire world but they will be sort of interacting with it throughout the path that they take from the city to whatever might be the end destination and be encountering different elements of this world as they progress and be told stories about other parts of the world that they might end up going to and that will sort of build some uh, some tension and some uh, some emotional connection to these places for the reader even before they get there. I think that's how I would go about doing it. So start off from a small, uh, sorry, from the big city, but start off from a city and then branch out to the rest of the living fantasy world. And actually having it as an established world, even though I would probably have it as like an island, water all around it, so that there is some form of 
What should we say? Limitations to the amounts of things that can actually be happening on this island. And then you can probably introduce the ocean around them is some form of magical thing as well. Or that this island is just an island within a big lake. And outside of that, there's even more land. You can go all the way you want with this, right? Uh, but that's probably how I would start introducing it. Sort of the island idea, the island mindset. And uh, sort of present the story from there. That was a lot, uh, loosely connected, I'd say. <laughs> Let's move on to question number trois. Yeah, that's how you say it in French. Um, what sort of problems slash obstacles could I create for the characters in this genre? Now, with a very big army where everybody is supposed to matter, problems could obviously be one of them or a lot of them perishing and really dealing with the emotional, uh, what you would say, the emotional problems and the emotional... Uh, you know, the, the emotions rather, just say it like that, the emotions face for the rest of the army when parts of it perishes in battle or in natural disaster and whatever. You can also take the approach that the main character is supposed to be all, all logical and don't really believe in the fantasy world that they live in, be presented with... What, for instance, let's say that when the army is perishing, they sort of move on to the afterlife or to their next life. Maybe they reincarnate. Maybe that's how the entire army is keeping together and he's so big because they always reincarnate and make, make new parts of the army, let's say, and fulfill a new role. And so the character that is the logical one can sort of be encountering this, questioning it and realizing that this is actually what is happening in that specific world. And that sort of obstacle problem interaction would be the problem faced by the main character quote unquote, yeah whatever how you want to say it I don't really know right now why because it would be the main character if it is the army as a unit or the one character that is going to be in interacting with everybody else because if it is then the army is going to work more like a sub character and sort of a secondary character supporting the main character who is going to be all the logic or we say that we have a sort of a duo with the army being one unit and the logical person being one unit yeah that's how we're going to do it instead and maybe we can have this entire attack on titan idea that it's very uh, you know it's very weird being outside of the city because it's very dangerous and that way we can introduce a sort of new element of danger into the story which means that the army always needs to be on their toes the logical person in the middle right could be the one that might be adapting towards this new fantasy story land or however you want to say it and becomes a general in the army leading the army to victory in the last battle something along those lines it's probably really trope heavy <laughs> to say the least but that's just on the top of my head right how i probably go about writing a fantasy story in the general gist of it obviously with different specific quirks being laid out over time when having people read it and give it back to me and being like you know what i, I know this is all your imagination it probably went rather quick to to put together let's say six months to a year there's so much inconsistency in this story and we can go about that two ways we can either say thank you very much i will change that or it could be it's magic bro <laughs> uh, it's fantasy though i mean just just hand yourself over to the to the experience and the immersion they're like but you're breaking your internal logic you're breaking your own established internal logic in the story bugs me and i'm like you're right <laughs> i'm gonna change that not like yeah, anyway i'm not even gonna get into that other stories um Let's move on to question number four so we actually get somewhere here today, right? And that is question number four. Who would be the intended target audience if I were to write a story within this genre? Based on what I basically said, I'd say it's a teen story. Tween, maybe. Probably tween. I'm thinking like between 10 and 15 years old. Try to cater this uh, explorative and adventurous sense of the main logical character, whilst also trying clashing logic and magic, which you could also some sort of say is the same as be having faith in reality and being very, what you would say, logic-based in reality. And then you can mold the two together and say that they can actually coexist simultaneously as well. Sort of trying to tackle those, what you would say, not problems, but those themes of reality for a younger reader who is in the midst of of their puberty and going through all different changes in the world trying to make sense of it and this could be you know the lesson could be guiding you towards this experience that it's okay both to have faith and not to have faith uh, you know the world isn't going to come crumble down around you just because you make such a quote-unquote arbitrage 
choice and that you could actually go back on that choice and that the consequences wouldn't be that big. I don't know if that would be the lesson, could be the exact opposite that you need to commit to something. Haven't yet figured out all the quirks, but what I do believe is that if I write a fantasy story, there are going to be some elements in there which grown-ups, I'd imagine, will have a hard time accepting, at least when I write it. And that is that there are going to be certain quirks out there that will probably be more fitted and more, you know, probably fit better in a younger person's mind. I think they will have an easier time adapting to to the sort of things I would like to present, sort of different creatures and so on and so forth, trying to either confirm the status quo and just go on tropes and say that I'm marketing it towards younger uh, younger, you know, tweens and teens because they don't know about all the tropes yet, I know. Or it could be trying to go against it all together and trying to fit in between them reading, you know, Lord of the Rings and all of these other orcs and troll stories and trying to find in my own creations and my own races and sort of expanding their opinion and their point of view on what can actually become fantasy that you don't need to be stuck in these tropes and you can actually create something entirely new. Uh, there are lots of different ways of approaching it, but I think that I would go towards uh, teens and tweens with this one if I were to write a story within fantasy. And I'll obviously also cater the problems and obstacles around that factor and the, uh, the language around that factor as well. Now, moving into the last question. So that were earlier than yesterday when I only had like 60 seconds left to summarize my opinion on something. How much enjoyment would I get out of creating something within this thematic genre? Since I could go wild with my fantasy and imagination and creativity, I think a whole lot of satisfaction. I'm thinking a solid 8 out of 10, maybe a 9 out of 10. Uh, the, only pro the only problem I have personally with this is that since I need to establish the internal logic all by myself, especially if I don't want to run with different fantasy tropes that are pre-existing and predetermined, and really want to make my own real internal logic, my own world with my own races, their own motivations, and their own sort of stereotypes, that's gonna take a long time, <laughs> and I'm only limited by my imagination, which at times is really good, because you can create however much you want to. And at times, that's a real con, because I can create however much I want to. And sometimes, you've seen me over these last year, sometimes I have days where I just burst out for creativity, and I would probably come up with things that I can write about for years if I only wanted to. And then, the pro and, the and you might say, that's all fine, good and dandy, didn't do that. Yeah, but the problem is, a few weeks later, I will come up with new ideas that I also want to incorporate. And then I need to sort of figure out which ones of these ideas are the best. Should I incorporate all of them? Oh, it works with incorporating all of them. It will take like a hundred years to write this book in order to fulfill it the way I want it to be. That's the main problem with this genre, as I'd say, for me, because I'd say that the ceiling and the potential for creation with my imagination and the way that I tend to operate with making new stuff is... It's limitless, but it is for everyone, right? If you think about it, everybody has a limitless opportunity and a limitless uh, potential, probably, or very near to it when it comes to creativity and imagination. So, yeah, it's going to be hard to sort of strike a balance between imaginative enough and lean towards certain tropes so that I can be able to support my new internal logic that I want to create and sort of build out onto existing tropes so that I don't have to explain those existing tropes that much or as much. Sort of saving maybe 50 to 80 years of me trying to be the spider in the web, pulling all of the things together and being like, oh, this works, but not with that. So I need to change that. Oh, oh no, if I change that one thing, I need to change the 90 other things that surround it. Peace. Yeah, you know, sort of that approach is probably entirely doable. I would very much, I, I think I gravitate towards such a story, though, uh, because fantasy is something that I'm really interested in, especially because this very creative element it has to it and be really be able to uh, just pour out your mind really in paper and uh, create the story. I think it has real potential out there, but it has some uh, after doing this project so far, it has some real contesters, I must say, which I probably wouldn't have guessed before doing this project. So it's nice to see that I'm developing and uh, evaluating these different genres as well, uh, which we will be talking about in a few days when we're doing the roundup in 359. 
Anyway, mate, that was everything for me today so far. Have a nice one. And I might just say, I think I have the time to say what we're going to come up against tomorrow, which is going to be, yes, sci-fi. Which is probably also going to start in a very similar way of me speaking about a specific sci-fi franchise or whatever brand and say like i don't want to do this <laughs> because i'm probably very inspired by it when it comes to sci-fi anyway mates that's everything for me today i'll see you tomorrow have a nice one bye